I swear I can explain. All right, let's go. For those of you who just clicked on this video randomly and have no idea what I'm on about, well, first off, welcome. I do hope you enjoy your stay on this channel. I make lots of different content and I hope you enjoy it. And secondly, this is a follow up to my Kitchen Impact Tier List video. Uh, <coughs> Wherein I had some choice words to say about the Raiden Shogun. Nah, -uh. <gasps> nah, -uh. not 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 by any stretch of the imagination. I do not like the Raiden Shogun at all. Yeah, times change, as in the wishing system can change it. So let's discuss. Let's cut right to the chase here. I think I was wrong about a lot of Raiden's characterization. Go ahead, strike me down! Now granted, I do stand by a lot of what I said during the tier list video, and I wish to expand my thoughts further on that before I get to the good stuff. Raiden isn't a perfect character by any stretch of the imagination, and I wish to be fair in both directions with today's analysis. With that said, oh my god, the Inazuma Archon Quest did not do her justice. When it comes to the opinions of everybody who played every single Archon Quest in Genshin Impact, a lot of people will point to Inazuma having the worst one by a country mile. And it's not hard to see why, honestly. In Mondstadt, we had a relatively simple story about Venti's pet dragon having a bad case of the horn. In Lila, we had the departing of the Geo God before going to fight Perfect Chaos like it's 1999. And Sumeru had the creation of a god before our very eyes, cause a teen let his angst become his entire personality. All of these stories don't bite off more than they can chew. Sumeru comes close, but reels a back during the climax, and it's a damn good one too, might I add. Inazuma, by comparison, tries to eat like it's a golden crow. Allow me to go through every single important story beat during the Inazuma Archon quest. <gasps> the god is obsessed with eternity, so he takes away all the visions. There's also a war going on between the natives of Watsutsumi Island and also the general on the mainland Inazuma. There's also the threat of delusions being used to take away human life, because Inuar is absolutely psychotic and the Fatui are absolutely heartless beings. And on top of that, there's also two entire character quests based on the story that only one of them matters, that being Yumi. <laughs> And also the only one that matters that's actually being Yoimiya's. Why on the tippy top we also have connected to an event during 1.1 that nobody will get if they didn't play for that long, making newcomers to the story absolutely confused and disgusted, especially because it comes back in 3.2. Genshin writers, do you not know how to make a cake? Cause it does not need this many toppings. And believe me, that little fast paced recap right there that was me going over things on a surface level. The Inazuma Archon Quest was a slog to get through. While yes, the different character stories were good, Ayaka's in fact actually made me cry at like 4am, and the final cutscene of hers being particularly beautiful, dab socks aside. And y'all already know I've got endless patience for Yoimiya, seeing as her quest was actually what got me into Genshin. I love you, girl. Oh. But I feel like above all else, the issues with the pacing, the issues with the amount of just stuff going on, I feel like the worst thing to come out of this particular story, it's Raiden as an antagonist. And that's what I want to discuss right now. I kind of get what they were going for, but I feel like it needed some more time to stew. The idea is great. It subverts our expectations going from Mondstadt and Liyue, and then later Sumeru. But man, the writers didn't do anything with it. The most we see from her being the antagonist are three cutscenes and a couple of bosses. One of which is a forced loss that was handled dreadfully. Forced losses in video games need to be handled with extreme care that make you want to go back and get back at the foe that I doubt you so heavily. A way you can fix not only that, but also fix the issues with writing as an antagonist is to implement what many writers and gamers have called the Gruntilda effect. Dubbed after the big bad from Banjo-Kazooie. This style of writing your antagonist is very commonplace. We see them at the start of the story, doing something cruel to a sympathetic character, and as the game progresses, we see how far an antagonist goes for their goal to be accomplished. Along the way, we get lots of insight as to how much the characters have, have put the others through, making the protagonist the people's last hope, and it all leads up to a climactic showdown where you put your pent-up frustration to decimate the antagonist. To put it in non-writer's terms, you're making a bad guy everyone loves to hate. 
Whether or not you realize it, so many different villains in so many different games have this villain archetype. While they may not be true villains in every single one of them, they are still very much an antagonistic force, and it still works either way. And honestly, you can have this writing style for Raiden, and I think it would make perfect sense. The seeds of it are there, what with the first time being the Shogun being a catalyst event? or an event that puts the plot in motion. The Shogun is the antagonist doing something cruel to a sympathetic character, that being the theft of Tomo's vision. This prompts our protagonist to step in. We get our first battle with her and we get destroyed. In an effort to discuss, she orders her troop to hunt us down. Strong start, I'd say. But then, it really doesn't pick back up again for a while. If you want a threatening antagonist, that's great. But you need to make sure your audience remembers what they're fighting for in order for all the beats in the story to stick. To be perfectly honest, there really isn't a lot that happens until we get to Watatsumi Island after we get the scene where Raiden tries to steal Toma's vision. Plus, you know, actually getting to see our foe do bad things in more than a few select instances helps with that. It's why people think Grunty is Grady Kazili, but absolutely terrible and nuts and balls. While you don't need to be as over the top as Grunty or Fawful, this writing archetype can help steer your antagonist in the right direction, and it seemed like Raiden was going there. They just dropped the ball and never bothered to pick it up again until the very end. Which, to me, was very upsetting. Yeah, I've been quite the moper so far in this video, haven't I? Wasn't I supposed to be saying why I like Raiden now? Yes, we're about to get into that. Inazuma's story is a complete mess, and the Shogun is the antagonist at the top of the list of things that I'd change. That much is clear, right? That being said, all hope with it isn't lost. And here's where my new thoughts about Raiden come into play. While yes, I think that the Shogun was a bit of a letdown, Raiden A is an entirely different story. For those of you who are understandably confused, allow me to explain. The Shogun is her own character. She's very monotone, can be needlessly cruel, and commands respect from anybody around her. Raiden A, however, is very different. She's a lot more soft-spoken and doesn't feel nearly as intimidating. She can still command respect, of course, but she has a bit of a playful side to her and I love that! You can attribute that to the phenomenal voice performance by Anne Yadko, perfectly showing the two halves of the character from just their delivery alone and it's fantastic! Here, take a listen! Thunder's roar and lightning's flash. So ephemeral. This is why reaching eternity is desirable. Oh, dear me. That didn't frighten you, did it? After all, you are in the presence of the most supreme and terrifying incarnation of lightning in the whole of Tevat. Who? Ah, the Firework Maker. A manufacturer of fleeting illusions, enamored with the realm of fantasy and imagination, but a subject of mine nonetheless. Kamisato. Hmm. One of the most distinguished clans in all of Inazuma. Huh? That's exactly what the Shogun said? Well, uh... Ayaka's also well first in the art of the sword. I know I brought it up during the previous video, but I honestly feel like I undersold how good it was. Cause, yeah, it's really good. It kinda makes me wish that A was the main voice you would hear when you play as her after the quest is over, but meh, whatever. Point is, she's a fantastic and interesting character. And I must now make a big correction to the tier list video when I say that, looking back, I was way too harsh on A's first story quest. I was just so burned at how bad the Shogun was as an antagonist that I just didn't care about A at all completely missing the point of what the first story quest was meant to do. So my question is, what exactly was A's story supposed to do? The answer is simple. A's first story quest is all about her learning about modern Inazuma, so that her idea of eternity can coexist with the residents of today. Her vision of the region was so clouded because she was in the plane of Euthymia for so long. Only now everything is clear for her and she wants to make amends for the kind of hell that she put her residence through with the Vision Hunt Decree. It does play like a day date, yes. But as a result, it's a very lighthearted story that, for the most part, doesn't try and pull anything it doesn't need to. Unlike half of the stuff in the Inazuma Archon Quest, I'm willing to admit that I was wrong about this story quest during my initial analysis of Raiden during the tier list video. And I could see what they were going for now. And as a result, it's become one of my favorites in this game. And just to make the deal even sweeter, every event in Inazuma after 2.2, it has the Shogun 
as A, and that's a lot better, and we deserve to see more of her. A, despite her commanding appearance, can be legitimately endearing. And it's an aspect that I feel went underappreciated in my original video. And her first two story quests helped show that off wonderfully. The first story quest was not only a brilliant breath of fresh air, but it also gave A the character arc that she needed so desperately. And it helped me to appreciate some of the finer details that I was missing out on before. It had laughs, it had a charming main lead, and it had some good drama as well. Like I said, it's become one of my favorites in this game for that reason. And of course, I feel like I don't have to elaborate as much on why I think the second story quest is top tier. Because, yeah, I said that in the original video, and I will happily repeat myself here. It's a somber tale about two sisters and brings A's character into completion for me. Not only is the story they told with A wonderful and executed amazingly, but it has one of the best endings I have ever seen in a story-based game. And I mean that genuinely. In fact, the first time that I ever finished this story quest, despite me hating the Shogun and not really caring that much for A, it still got me a little bit emotional. And I'm not afraid to say that. It's an incredibly sad story that makes me love A's character arc all the more. In fact, I'd go as far to say that A has become one of my favorite characters. Huh. Something tells me I probably should have done something a long time ago. You know what? I think it's time we rewrite history. Well, there you have it. You now know why the Raiden Shogun has become one of my favorite characters. Well, more specifically, A, but the statement still stands. To be totally truthful with all of you right now, this video was one of the hardest things I've ever had to make in a very, very, very long time. Over at least a few months of planning, a full month of production and post-production, it was a lot of work, I will tell you that much. I know I don't usually ask for these kinds of things because it kind of just seems like the YouTuber kind of way, but if you do like this content and we would like to see more of it, like, subscribe, the bell, all that stuff, it truly does help me out against the sea of the YouTube algorithm. But before I go, I have a few people I'd like to thank for supporting me financially by buying a sub on Twitch or who were gifted a sub. From top to bottom, I'm here to thank... Noble Bull, Zero Dromus, Luna7823, Sabian Black, and Mellow Sony12. Thank you all so much for watching this video. It really means a lot that you decided to stick around for this long, and I hope to keep doing stuff like this in the future, even if it will end up killing me inside. <laughs> but with that, that is the end. Thank you all so much again, and I'll see you in whatever happens to me next. Take care!